good afternoon all. So, this is the fourth lecture of drop inlet spillway. So, here uh, we are going to cover the basic spillway design and the, in the last lecture we are going to solve a problem based on this design aspect. So, these are the two uh, points to be covered. So, first a uh, different uh, we are going to cover the different component of the uh, design. So, first one is the crest discharge. So, crest discharge this is the design head and suppose the discharge. So, this uh, graphical representation is given here. So, the first part. So, this part until this the where or uh, entrance or as you remember in couple of slides ago we discussed about when the control 1 prevails. So, where our control flow prevails and in the second condition 2 as you remember in the discharge characteristics curve of the drop inlet spillway structure. So, here the orifice the second part the orifice control prevails and so this was in that graph. So, A to G was the wear or entrance control and then G to H was orifice control and the last part is pipe or exit control where the full pipe flow prevails. So, for small head the flow over the drop inlet spillway is generally uh, governed by characteristics of the crest. So, the vertical transition beyond the crest will flow full either uh, fully or the partially and the flow will cling to the side of the shaft. So, it can cling at the side of the shaft and however, with increasing discharge the annular nappe becomes thicker and it eventually converges into a solid jet. So, this way here it can show uh, particularly how the flow um, can takes place in the crest design. So, this is uh, the principal elements of the nappe shape profile for the circular wear. The point where the annular nappe, so this part, this annular nappe joins uh, the solid jet. So, here the point where the annular nappe joins the solid jet here. So, this point at the bottom is called the crotch. So, this particular point is called crotch. Okay. And after the solid jet forms, so once the solid jet forms here, so it can create a structure called boil, so which will occupy the region above the crotch. So, crotch is formed at the bottom and the solid jet uh, because of the flow of continuous flow of water and the water uh, solid jet forms at the top. So, this part is called a boil. And both crotch and the top of the boil become progressively higher with larger discharge. So, once the discharge is higher, so the both crotch and boil become higher here and for high head the crotch and boil will almost flood out. So, this is the uh, principal elements of the structure here. Now, uh, the vortex ac action in the flow can be minimized to, main to maintain the converging flow into the drop inlet. So, to minimize the vortex action uh, generally a guide pires or anti vortex plate are provided uh, at the uh, along the crest. If the profile and the, tran profile and the transition conform to the shape of the lower nappy of the jet, uh, then the discharge is uh, generally cover, uh, governed by the equation of um, uh, flow of water through wear. So, so, discharge is a function of C L, where C is the coefficient, L is the length. Uh, here, length is nothing but the perimeter or the periphery in case of the circular shape of the wear and h is the head measured. 
Now, L is in general taken at the outside periphery of the crest and if H is measured uh, to the apex of the outflow overflow shape, then equation become. So, since it is a circular periphery, so here we measure the perimeter of the circular pipe r is the radius of that pipe and h 0 since it is the overflow shape at the outlet and is h 0 and 3 by 2. So, this is nothing but the flow through the wire. Now, the coefficient of discharge of the circular crest differs from that of the straight crest. So, here in this case the effect of submergence and back pressure incident to the joining of the converging flows, thus C 0 must be related to both H 0 and R s. So, this coefficient uh, is expressed in terms of the function of H 0 by R s. So, there is a, a different graphs are given at various point uh, values of p divided by r s. So, there is a graph of h s by h 0 versus h 0 by r s is provided. So, at different point, so you can determine based upon the h a value of h uh, 0 by r s for assumed value of p by, uh, by r s the h s by h 0 value. So, this is the actual uh, point and the dotted lines are shows the extrapolated uh, lines of the plot. So, these coefficients are only valid if the crest profile and the transition shape conform to that of the jet flowing over a sharp crested circular wire at a 0 head. And if aeration is provided, so that sub atmospheric pressure does do not exist along the lower nappe surface contact. So, the discharge coefficient C 0 are all in English unit and so to convert it into the metric unit, the coefficient should be multiplied by a conversion factor uh, 0.552. So, free flow in the wire prevails for H 0 by R s ratios up to approximately 0.45 and the wire control governs in this case. So, beyond that the flow become turbulent. And um, H 0 by R s ratio increases above 0.5 4, 5, the wear is now partly submerged and the flow showing characteristics of the submerged wear is now an control condition. So, when the H 0 by R s ratio approaches 1, the water surface above the wear is now completely submerged. For this, the higher H 0 by R s, the flow phenomena is now become an orifice flow. So, based upon the ratio between H 0 by R s different flow conditions prevails. Now, crest profile how you plot the crest profile the values of the coordinate to define the shape of the lower surface of the nappe flowing over an aerated sharp crested circular wire for various condition of P by R s and H 0 by R s uh, H s by R s can be obtained from tables. So, these values are given then H 0 by R is now can be interpolated from this given values. So, now you can see the x and y are the lower nappe surface for different values of H s by R s. So, you can see the H for different values of H s by R s is given at the bottom of the table and for different p by R s values. So, when the p by R s is 2 and so, different values of uh, H s by R s is given and from this suppose you have a value of P by R s as 2 and uh, your value of H s by R s is lying between 1 and 2, then you can get a uh, x and y coordinates of this nappe from interpolating these tables. So, this is when the condition is P by R s is 2. Now, when this is a point 0.3, 
then a uh, different table uh, the coordinates of lower nappe surface for different tables are provided. So, when it is the value is little less and this is again if the value is still less. So, this is a for different values of H s by R s the x and y coordinates are given. Now, the crest profile typical upper and lower nappe profile for circular wear for various values of H s by R s are plotted in terms of the x and y coordinate and this is for, for different p by R s this can be uh, plotted for different assumed values of x and y. The comparison of lower nappe shapes for a circular wear for different values of H s for a given values of R s is given. The profile become increasingly suppressed for larger values as you can see for lower values these are starting here, but it is suppressed uh, when the values of H s by R s are increasing. The relationship of again the relationship between the circular crest coefficient. So, these are the circular crest coefficient. Uh, to different H s by R R s and H s by H 0 is provided for different value of P by R s in case of the aerated nappe and again here the dash lines are extrapolated lines and from this you can um, derive the coefficient circular crest coefficient. Now, the approximate increase in radius required to minimize the subatmospheric pressure of the crest are again determined from this graph. So, at different values of H 0 by R s you can get the approximate increase in radius where R s is the actual radius and R dash s is the increased radius. So, this is the point of intersection. So, if this is a value of your H 0 by R s. So, you can get the this value here and based up, uh, on this fraction you can take into account the approximate increase in radius to minimize the subatmospheric pressure inside the flow of the drop inlet spillway. Now, coming to transition design the diameter of a jet issuing uh, from a horizontal orifi orifice can be determined for any point below the water surface if it is assumed that the continuity equation is still valid. So, so, in this case all the frictional and other losses are neglected only the it is assumed that the continuity of equation is valid in this case. So, since most of the cases the circular jet area is assumed. So, that is why so, discharge is a function of area and the velocity. So, this is the velocity of head. So, solving for different values of r. So, this empirical equation follows. Okay. So, where h a is nothing but a discharge between. So, if you solve this which uh, will roughly or approximately will take that form and you can get this equation. So, H a here is the distance between the water surface and the elevation under consideration. So, now you assume that the diameter of the jet in dust decreases with the distance of the free vertical fall for normal design application. If an assumed total head loss like means including the jet contraction losses, frictional losses and velocity losses from the direction changes, then you take it is equal to the point 0.1 h a. Then the equation is modified 
and, deter and determining required for the shaft radius. Now, the shaft radius can be approximated using this equation. So, after taking H a. So, this equation is particularly valid if H a is taken as 0 0.1 of H a. So, including all kind of losses like contraction losses, frictional losses, velocity losses from direction changes it is. So, this equation is for the shape of the jet. So, if it is used for determining the shape of the shaft, then it will give the minimum size that will accommodate the flow without restriction and without developing any pressure along the side of the shaft. Now, coming to conduit design, the required size of the shaft and the outlet leg would vary according to the available net head along with its length. If the slope of the hydraulic gradient is flatter than the slope of the conduit, the flow will accelerate and the required size of the conduit will decrease. When the conduit slope is flatter than the slope of the hydraulic gradient, the flow will decelerate and the required size of the conduit will increase. So, these two cases are opposite and vice versa to each other. Now, in our design we also uh, take care of the bulking and surging etc. So, to allow, allow for the air bulking surging, so this kind of losses the conduit size should be selected so that it will not flow more than 75 percent full at the downstream end at maximum discharge point. So, we only consider the 75 percent of the flow pipe flow full pipe flow. So, under this limitation air will be able to pass from the conduit at the downstream portal. To prevent the formation of sub atmospheric pressure along the conduit length also this 75 percent flow condition is assumed. Now, an ideal design has the crest control throughout a different range of the discharge. So, this uh, ends the basic design principle and in the next uh, lecture, we are going to solve a problem based on this design. Thank you.